Judgment in the appeal, pressed against Petrodell Resources Limited and others. Lord Sumption will announce the decision of the court. Um, this appeal highlights a problem which has troubled the family division uh, for a number of years in high-value divorce cases, uh, especially those with an international element. Uh, under the Matrimonial Causes Act of 1973, the court has wide powers to order financial provision to be made for the parties to divorce proceedings and the children of the marriage. In particular, Section 24 empowers the court to order one party to the marriage to transfer to the other any property to which the first party is, quote, entitled, unquote. The question is this. Assume that the economically dominant party is the husband. It usually is. What if his assets consist of companies which he owns and controls? In theory, he can be made to hand over the shares of the companies or to sell them and hand over the proceeds. But if the companies are incorporated outside the United Kingdom, and especially if the shares are bearer shares or registered in a closed registry, an order of that kind may be practically impossible to enforce. An alternative suggestion, which is what has given rise to this appeal, is that instead of ordering the husband to transfer the shares to the wife, the, company, the court may order his companies directly to transfer their assets to her. It has been suggested that there is nothing unjust about this if the companies are really just owned and controlled creatures of the husband. In the present case, the principal matrimonial home throughout the marriage was in London, but the husband, Mr. Prest, has dual Nigerian and British nationality and is resident in Monaco. His assets consist, in substance, of his interest in a group of companies, all of them incorporated outside the United Kingdom, uh, which are engaged in oil trading, exploration, and production. The judge found uh, that he not only owned and controlled the companies, but treated their assets as if they were his own. Uh, three of the companies are parties to this appeal. They are the legal owners of eight residential properties in the United Kingdom. One of the properties is the matrimonial home. Uh, the other seven are investment properties and are let. The wife claims an order against the companies, requiring them to transfer the properties to her. The judge made that order, but the Court of Appeal set his order aside on the ground that the properties belonged to the companies and not to Mr. Prest himself. They were not, therefore, properties to which Mr. Prest was, in the language of the Act, entitled. The Supreme Court unanimously allows the appeal and restores the order of the judge, but not for the same reasons. Its reasons are set out primarily in a judgment which I have prepared. It is a fundamental principle of English law, indeed of most if not all advanced systems of law, that a company is a legal person in its own right. It is not the same as its shareholders. In order to justify an order requiring the company's properties to be transferred to the wife to satisfy the husband's obligations, it has to be shown that they are properties to which the husband is entitled although they are actually in the name of the companies. There are three possible grounds on which the husband might be regarded as entitled to the company's properties. The first is that the court might simply ignore the separate legal personality of the companies and treat their assets as if they belonged to the person who in reality controlled them. The second is that the word entitled in section 24 of the Matrimonial Causes Act might be given a special meaning extending not just to assets of one of the spouses, but to assets uh, under that spouse's control, or assets of companies under that spouse's control. The third possibility is that it might be proved on the facts of a particular case like this one, that there is an arrangement between the husband and his companies uh, under which the companies hold the properties on trust for him. The Supreme Court rejects the first of these possibilities. Uh, the assets of a company belong to the company and not to its shareholders. For more than a century, the courts have consistently held that this is so, even if there is only one shareholder and he controls everything that the company has done. To this principle, there is a limited exception which is based on public policy. The exception applies where a person is under some legal obligation or liability or is subject to some legal restriction and he deliberately evades it or frustrates its enforcement by interposing a company under his control. 
In such a case, the court may disregard the separate legal personality of the company, but only if there is no other way of giving effect to the liability, obligation, or restriction in question, and only for the purpose of depriving the company or its controller of the advantage which they would otherwise have obtained by interposing the company. This is a very limited exception, as may be seen from the fact that there are very few reported cases in which it has been applied, and hardly any uh, which could not have been decided on some other basis. The exception does not apply in this case, because, as the judge recognized, the husband did not interpose the companies for the purpose of evading or frustrating his legal obligations to his former wife. He did it long before the marriage was in difficulties, mainly for the purposes of ordinary wealth management. Some of the concurring judgments reserve the possibility of applying a test which may in some respects be wider than this, but nobody suggests that the test would, on any view, encompass a case like this one. Moving to the second possible ground, uh, the Supreme Court holds that Section 24 of the Matrimonial Causes Act does not confer any wider power to disregard the separate legal personality of the company than the general law does. In this respect, it agrees with the Court of Appeal and not with the judge. Judges of the family division are certainly entitled to take account of the assets of a spouse's company in deciding as a matter of fact how much that spouse is worth but cannot direct a company to transfer its assets to one spouse in satisfaction of the obligations of the other, unless either the limited exception at which I have described applies, or else uh, the company holds the asset in question in trust for the relevant spouse. Such a trust cannot be inferred from the mere fact that the spouse owns and controls the company. It remains to consider whether on the facts of this case it can be inferred from something else, the Supreme Court considers that it can. In the case of the matrimonial home, the judge found that the property was bought in the name of the company with money provided by the husband from his personal resources at a time when the company had no revenues of its own. The ordinary presumption of the law in these circumstances is that the property is held on trust for the person who paid for it. That conclusion was plainly correct in the case of the matrimonial home and has not been challenged on this appeal. In the view of this court, it also applies to the other seven properties. On the evidence, the money to pay for them can in some cases be specifically shown to have come from the husband, while in others the circumstances are such that that is inherently the most likely explanation. This evidence is far from conclusive, but the husband made no attempt to rebut it apart from wholly general denials and the administrator of his companies declined to give evidence in circumstances which point to a deliberate attempt to protect the assets in the company's name by depriving the court of information. The court is entitled to draw all proper inferences against a party whose conduct shows that he has something to hide. In the result, therefore, the Supreme Court will reinstate the judge's order requiring the companies to hold legal uh, requiring the companies holding the legal title to the properties to execute all the documents required for their effective transfer to the wife <clears throat>